Russian paradise, the northern Palmyra, a window onto Europe. Majestic, outstanding, mysterious, full of splendid drama and grandiose victories. The hero city, the dream city, the city museum, the city of Peter. Welcome to St. Petersburg, the unrivaled treasure trove of arts and culture, the imperial capital of Russia, its glory and pride. I'm Kate and I'll guide you through the most iconic landmarks of the city that once captured my heart and that never fails to inspire and impress. One city, one love. When you come to St. Petersburg, you immediately immerse yourself in the unique blend of art, culture and history. You can't stop admiring this open-air museum, framed by the pompous facades of the imperial palaces, elegant embankments, graceful brooches, sophisticated mansions, charming cathedrals, winding rivers and canals. For such a short history of only three centuries, it has witnessed the most flourishing days and withstood the most tragic moments, like any other city. Every lavish architectural ensemble, even rears and canals, everything here is a masterpiece. And it's hard to imagine what titanic work, unprecedented willpower and a great deal of strength demanded this stunning beauty. St. Petersburg was a real ambitious venture of Peter I. His daring dream was to create a new capital of the powerful Russian Empire. The heroic city was built at the mouth of the Neva River, on an impossible marshland that was wreathed in mist and wind. He challenged not only the nature, but the old principles of Rus. Thus, a window to the Western world was opened. Our journey into the past will commence here, at Peter and Paul's fortress, which is the cradle and the birthplace of the city. It was the first fortification building and Peter needed to secure his positions on the Baltic shores to protect Russian lands from the Swedish invaders. So he decided to build a new fortress of bastion types. Its location was chosen due to its strategical advantages because the island Yenizari, where the fortress was built, was protected from all the sides by the Neva River and the artillery fire could go to all directions. The foundations of the fortress were laid on a special day of the Holy Trinity. The fortress was named after Peter's patron saint, the Apostle Peter, who was usually depicted on the icons with the keys to paradise. It was really symbolic as Peter I owned his keys to paradise after the glorious victory in the Great Northern War over Sweden. Russia got its long-awaited water route through the Baltic Sea to the Western lands. The name of the fortress was transferred to the whole city. The construction works were supervised by the Tsar's closest assistant, the military commander, the first governor of the city, Alexander Menshikov. The plan of the fortress was developed by Peter himself, with the help of the French military engineer, Joseph Lambert. Initially, the fortress was made of wood. It repeated the outline of the island and looked like an irregular hexagon of six fortification bastions connected by the walls with ravelins. They were named in honor of the Tsar's closest associates as they carried out the construction process. The work was done swiftly, but bitterly extreme weather conditions, lack of food, tools, led to mass human losses. After a severe flood, the Tsar ordered to rebuild the fortress in stone and entrusted this work to the Italian architect Domenico Trezzini, who became the first architect of the city and the founder of the architectural style between Baroque. Double stone walls with 400,000 piles were erected and all the fortress was clad in granite only 100 years later. The real pride of the fortress is the first ceremonial entrance, Peter Gate, which is lavishly decorated in the Baroque style. There is a beautiful legend saying that when Peter marked the spot for the fortress, a beautiful eagle landed on that place. Peter considered it as a lucky omen. He put the bird into his hand and entered proudly the imaginary gates as the victorious leader. A triumphal arch with a two-headed eagle made of lead emphasized the growing power of Russia. The decorations of the gates include the depiction of the scene, the overthrow of Simon by the Apostle Peter, who drives away the demons with his prayers. There are two statues of Athens, the patroness of the cities with a snake in her hands as a symbol of wisdom, and a victorious warrior with a salamander depicted on her helmet as a symbol of invincibility. 
This unique monument survived to the present day since those times. That's really surprising that the fortress never served its intended defensive function. Already, in the 18th century, the fortress was notorious as the most sinister prisons, with its horrendous torture chamber for the state criminals and the most prominent political enemies. It was even called the Russian Bastille. Among its first prisoners was Peter's son, Zarevich Alexei, who was accused of conspiracy acts against his father's reforms. Among the most famous inmates were more than 200 of the conspirators involved in the Decembrist revolt. It was seized by the Bolsheviks at the start of the October Revolution and was used to bombard the Winter Palace. Only after the revolution the fortress was converted into a museum. Now Peter and Paul Fortress is the central complex of the State Museum of the History of St. Petersburg. In the middle of the fortress stands one of the most recognizable and the most impressive structure, St. Peter and Paul's Cathedral. That is the burial place of all the Russian emperors from the Romanov dynasty, from Peter the Great to Nicholas II. Its gold and elegant spire is stretching gracefully towards the heaven and the figure of a flying angel holding the cross guards the city with its invisible power. Initially, a wooden church was built in honor of the Holy Apostles, Peter and Paul, right after the city was officially founded. But the growing city needed the stone cathedral. The construction of it took 20 years and was directed under the guidance of Trezini, who built it in the new style of Peter's Baroque. Peter was inspired by the Dutch architecture, so the idea to design a rectangular-shaped cathedral with a bell tower and a landmark needle belonged to him. All the features were borrowed from the Protestant churches of Western Europe and highlighted a striking difference from the traditional Orthodox churches. The interior of the cathedral includes the carved gilded iconostasis from the Orthodox traditions and a carved pulpit from the Catholic Church. It really resembles a gorgeous palace and is considered as the Baroque masterpiece, embellished with all its stunning decorations, paintings, icons, crystal chandeliers and countless sculptures. One major attraction is the graves of most of the Romanov rulers of Russia and the tomb of Peter the Great was installed inside before the completion of the cathedral. Until 2012, the cathedral with its height of 122 meters was the tallest building in St. Petersburg. The figure of the angel is not only the symbol of the city, it serves as the weather wane and indicates the direction of the wind. Over the centuries, the buildings of various purposes and wide range of architectural styles were erected on the territory of the fortress. The boathouse was built by the architect Alexander Vist in the classicist style, specifically as a place to keep Peter's first ship, a small sailboat used by the young Tsar to learn naval principles. It was called the grandfather of the Russian Navy. The Mint, which is one of the oldest industrial enterprises in the city, was designed in the strict classical style and replaced coining workshops in the fortifications of the fortress. It started to produce the commemorative coins, state awards and other official medals. The Commandant's and Engineering House in a Baroque style was built as the headquarters of the fortress guards, who constructed and maintained the defences of the fortress. It was truly an honoured position and was held for the whole life. There is an unusual monument to Peter the Great that is worth special mentioning. You can have a look at it. It is really grotesque and it has a massive body, a tiny head and very long fingers. We cannot know for sure if the ruler looked like this in reality, but people say that this monument helps and brings good luck. In 1992, the sculptor Mikhail Shimakin created it based on the death mask and the wax figure of Peter. But this controversial image of the great emperor is still the subject of dispute. I'm sitting next to the main symbol of the fortress. The Yenizari island from the Finnish language means the hare island. So prior to the times when fortress been built here, this place used to be a swamp full of hares. And there is another legend saying that during one severe flood, a small tiny hare leaped on Peter's boot and was saved by the ruler. So this is how the island got its name. And people believe that these hares make your wishes come true.
You will encounter numerous lovely hidden muskets on the territory of the fortress, and who knows, maybe they were the ones who fulfilled Peter's daring dream. During the times of Peter, the cannons announced military victories, the beginning and the end of the working day, alerted the local citizens about the floods and marked significant events. A tradition has been preserved to our days. Daily, at midday, the city hears the cannon firing a blank shot from the Nerushkin bastion. This dominant and mysterious place is a must for history buffs. Here you step back in times and you can feel the heartbeat of St. Petersburg. <laughs> 